Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss the COVID Delta variant. What is it, and should we be concerned about it? As with all viruses, the COVID virus is mutating. This is a natural thing that viruses do to survive and thrive. And the more people that SARS-CoV-2, or the virus that causes COVID-19, the more SARS-CoV-2 infects, the more it's able to potentially mutate. So this is likely why we're seeing more variants coming out of countries with low vaccination rates, because this gives the SARS-CoV-2 virus plenty of ability to infect lots of people and mutate ever so slightly with each infection. The Delta variant is one of these mutations. It was discovered in India in December 2020 and devastated that country. And now it's the dominant strain there and in the United Kingdom. It replaced the Alpha variant from the United Kingdom before it. And in the United States, the Delta variant has just started to become the form of SARS-CoV-2 that's causing COVID-19 infections. At this point, it's thought that 10% of COVID-19 infections in the U.S. are caused by the Delta variant but that will likely rapidly increase because at the end of May, it comprised only 3% of COVID cases. And we know that it's capable of spreading fast because as of mid-June, it's reached 80 countries just six months after its discovery. This variant is being called a quote, variant of concern for two reasons. One, it's because it's more easily transmissible between people. This variant is thought to be 60% more transmissible. And number two, it's thought to possibly cause more serious COVID-19 disease in those who are not fully vaccinated. But we don't have a lot of data on this to support it quite yet. A Lancet study published June 14th revealed some interesting data about the Delta variant based on data collected in Scotland. The data was collected from early April until early June. In this study of over 19,000 COVID cases, they found the risk of hospital admission was approximately doubled in those with the Delta variant compared to the Alpha variant. Furthermore, findings from the Imperial College of London published a few days ago show that the doubling time of the Delta variant is 11 days. A doubling time is the number of days before coronavirus cases, hospitalizations, and deaths doubled. And they also reported the R number of 1.5 in England for the Delta variant. An R number, also known as R naught, is a mathematical reproductive number that indicates how many people on average catch the virus from an infected person. So for every person that has the Delta variant, they're thought to infect on average between one to two people. For comparison, the Alpha variant R number was 0.8. Although don't y'all remember hearing early reproductive numbers with COVID? Some early data, specifically a study from around July 2020, stated that the earliest strain of the SARS-CoV-2 had a reproductive number between 2.2 and 2.7. But maybe that number was higher because there are no vaccines back then. And I do like that the reproductive number that's being reported now is from the same country and from the same organization using the same statistical analysis. So I think the overall takeaway is that this new variant is more contagious, more contagious than a prior variant, which would make sense because the virus is getting sneakier and more effective as it has to work harder to infect people, especially as more people are vaccinated. Well, why is it more transmissible? Scientists are still trying to figure that out, but two theories are that it may be able to enter human cells more easily than the other versions, or that once it infects your body, it's able to blend in better with human cells, making it harder to detect and evade our immune system. Professor Wendy Barclay from the Imperial College says there are mutations on the spike protein that change the way the virus survives in the airway and it's able to replicate faster and causes a higher viral load more quickly. Another description is that the Delta variant is stickier and therefore the virus can enter your airway more effectively and fight off immune cells. Also, swab tests have indicated that the Delta variant causes a higher viral load more quickly, so people spread more of the virus more effectively to others. 
Well, what about natural protection against the Delta variant from a prior COVID-19 infection? Do you have to worry about this variant if you've recovered from a COVID-19 infection? Well, a study published in the journal Cell showed some interesting data that may answer this question. When they looked at sera from someone that recovered from an earlier infection of COVID-19, the antibodies that were made against prior versions of the SARS-CoV-2 virus were not as effective against this newer strain. In fact, their words were, quote, there was a complete absence of neutralization of the Delta variant. So this is one of the reasons why, even if you've had a prior COVID-19 infection, it's recommended that you still get a COVID-19 vaccine. Another interesting aspect to this variant is that its presentation may be a bit different than what we've traditionally thought to look for. According to Professor Tim Spector of the Zoe app, which collects self-reported data on symptoms of COVID-19 infections in the UK, the symptoms with a Delta variant don't seem to include a cough or loss of taste and smell as often, but initial symptoms likely include headache, sore throat, runny nose, and fever. So people may simply think it's a cold and not quarantine, which probably is helping it to spread more easily. I wanna make a plug for the Zoe app. They're collecting data about COVID all over the world. And if you're interested in helping provide data to help understand COVID, see the information in the description below or go to covid.joinzoe.com. And lastly, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record on this, but the best way to protect yourself is to get vaccinated. The vaccines available have been shown to be very effective against the Delta variant. According to data from Public Health England, the Pfizer vaccine is about 88% effective in preventing symptomatic disease from the Delta variant and 96% effective in reducing the risk of hospitalization from the Delta variant. And we can assume the Moderna vaccine will probably perform similarly. But it's important to note that if only one dose of the mRNA vaccine is taken, this effectiveness falls to 33%. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine doesn't have as much data, but what I've read is that experts think it's about 60% effective against symptomatic disease from this variant. At the end of the day, if you have been fully vaccinated, then you don't need to worry about the SARS-CoV-2 Delta variant. If you're partially vaccinated, I would strongly recommend that you complete your vaccination. And if you've had a COVID-19 infection, I would still encourage you to get a COVID vaccine because it provides additional protection. Thanks for joining me.